Welcome to the CMC Markets Weekly Webinar with myself, Market Analyst David Madden. Uh, the date is Monday the 11th of September. Um, ap apologies for the slight te technical issues we've had at the very beginning of the webinar, but we will kick off the webinar right now. As always, we will I'll leave the risk warning on the screen in front of you. Uh, that is for you to have a read of it yourself. I'll leave the slides up there for a number of seconds so you can just read through the web, the risk warning itself, and that will keep my compliance department very happy. Uh, essentially, what it says is is that what is discussed in the webinar um, should not be construed as explicit trading or an investment advice. So, if you just want to keep reading through the risk warning yourselves. As always, the format for the webinar will be will be the same. Will be the same. Uh, I'll run down uh, the major events over, over the past 48 hours of the past few days. Uh, then I'll have a quick look at the week ahead, the major events to keep an eye out, both corporate and economic events to keep an eye out, uh, and then we'll run through the major markets uh, of what's been going on and what we potentially could see as the week unfolds. And then, as, as always, any questions you have or comments. Uh, any markets that I haven't covered that you would like me to cover, feel free to just stick them in the uh, in the chat box, and I will happily go through those as well. Excellent. Uh, so looking at the the major moves that we witnessed over, over since Friday's close um, in London, uh, since Friday's close, what we've essentially seen is two fronts: uh, Hurricane Irma in the in the, in North America has obviously caused a lot of devastation and a, a lot of destruction. Um, but what we have seen in relation to the hurricane is that it has not been downgraded to a category one hurricane. And going into it, it was a cat going into the weekend, it was deemed to be a category five hurricane. So the expectations were uh, for the for disruption and devastation and, and that, that it would cause has actually been uh, coming a lot lower than expected. So we've seen the equity markets take that quite positively because, quite frankly, they were traders were, were very much were very nervous uh, approaching the close of business on Friday. So we've seen very much a risk on day to day in relation to that. We also have seen some of the insurance stocks, which are under severe pressure at the back end of last week, have also bounced back this morning because, once again, obviously there are going to be tremendous costs and an effort in the cleanup uh, in, in the wake of Hurricane Irma. But it hasn't been uh, as bad as the markets ha and ha have, expect have expected. Also, what we saw over the weekend, or rather what we didn't see over the weekend, uh, over the weekend, the North Korean state had its anniversary of the founding of the state. And given that there has been such high heightened political tensions uh, in relation uh, between, say, Pyongyang and, and Tokyo and also the United States, in recent weeks, traders were, were very afraid that this, the event will be celebrated and marked by uh, the, the, the testing of a, of a missile or two, seeing as that didn't happen, that there was that there was a bit of expectation that that would happen, that also is adding to the bull sentiment we're seeing today. So today appears to be your classic risk on day, whereby equity markets are, are, are quite strong. Uh, we're also seeing a, a convert, we're also seeing a sell-off in metals such as gold and silver, which are the, they are the classic flight to quality plays. So taking a look now at the VTSE 100 and see how, how it's uh, shaping up. Uh, what I can say to you about the European indices, the, the kind of downward trend that, that they have been in for a number of months, does seem to kind of be, uh, be coming to an end. And we are seeing some kind of signs that we could be looking to kind of break out of, 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 the, of the kind of negative move. <clears throat> the VTSE itself, though, is a bit of a different animal. Um, it's been, to be honest, largely range-bound uh, for the last number of months. The, the, the skew and the bias has been to the downside, uh, but the kind of crucial or the, the, the key support uh, just, show, just south of 7,288, uh, 7,295, 7, that sort of region has, been, has, has, has acted well. And now we've actually seen a kind, of, kind of a move higher in the FTSE 100. We're now trading north of the 50 day moving average, we're trading, we're trading north of the 100 day moving average. And the next level to watch out for to the upside, uh, we could see the, the resistance at 74.61. And should we take out 74.61, we, we, we then could be looking towards 
481. And then north of that, the August high of 72,552. As we're seeing, this region here has been a decent level of support just in around the 7,300. And now that we're kind of moving up above these metrics, which uh, previously have acted as a combination of support and resistance the last few months, it is a bit of a bullish indicator. It's not overly, uh, it's not, it doesn't instill with you with loads of confidence that the the positive momentum is only just about, uh, uh, the momentum is just about in positive side. We have, we, we have to see a real, real convincing, we've yet to see a real kind of convincing uh, swing around in momentum. But as we can see with the price action, the, the bias uh, for the time being appears to be to the upside. But it's one of those things, the, the more the market goes up, the more confident you can be in that, in that upward move continuing. If we take out this this uh, this resistance level here, uh, the kind of September resistance at uh, 7,461, that could be an indication that this kind of almost month of consolidation has come to an end, and we could be looking to kind of push higher from there. And of course, should we break north of 7,461, then that level will in turn be that old resistance level. Will then of course uh, could be, could act as future support. And then, of course, once we take out that high, the, the, the big high to kind of shake off the overall kind of summer downward trend will be, should we take out 7,552? The DAX is, is, looking, uh, is looking a bit more interesting and a bit, and a bit, more, a bit more of a direction to it. The, the downward trend, <coughs> excuse me, I must, I must apologize. I do have a small bit of a cough. Uh, so, if, so if I do cough during the webinar, that isn't entirely surprising. And if you don't hear me talk for a number of seconds, it's maybe just because I'm having a quick drink of water. The downward trend that the DAX has been in for a number for a, a number of months now, we're seeing signs of that of that downward that overall downward move coming to an end. It was a classic downward trend, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, all the way down until late August. Then of course we saw a push higher uh, from late August, early September. That was also mirrored by the increase in positive momentum so that the move higher we, we're seeing here is also replicated in, in the increase in positive momentum uh, for the time being as uh, the 100 day moving average is going to be is could potentially act as as resistance this level here uh, which is 12,457 with the 100 day moving average i'm sorry i apologize the 50 day moving average this price here uh, 12,264 potentially acting as support should we see any downward moves but seeing as seeing as this this positive move here has taken off the highs of August it could suggest that this is potentially a turnaround or a shaking off of the kind of negating of the downward trend that we have been in for some months should we have a decisive move beyond the 100 day moving average at 12,457 beyond that we're going to be looking towards 12,500 and 12,576 and then, of course, the July high of 12,678. 12, Move to the downside could find support at the 200 day moving average, which comes into play uh, at this price here in around the kind of 12,000 and this is 12,070, 12,080 region. It has acted as decent support here in the past, bearing in mind. The U.S. markets have been in uh, in better shape than their uh, European counterparts. So, as, as I mentioned, the gap higher over the weekend, positive sign, uh, given what was happening in relation to Hurricane Irma. Um, the 50-day move just just south of the 50-day moving average in around the kind of 21,700 region has been acting as support for the Dow Jones uh, in, in in recent sessions. So while we remain north of that, the outlook could potentially continue to look positive. Uh, so obviously the gap higher that was created over the weekend is, is adding all, is also an indication that we could see uh, a, a further a further move higher in the Dow Jones. Notice how the negative momentum is ever so slightly decreasing. So that, that is also kind of pointing in the same direction. The momentum, negative momentum is, is falling while the price is rising. So the next level to watch out for to the upside could be the resistance uh, from here from, from the 1st of September at 22,039. And then should we take out that level 
the next price region uh, bulls will be looking potentially looking towards will be 22,200 and then 20 and then fresh and then, and then beyond that will be you'll be creating new record highs any moves lower uh, in the Dow Jones may find support in, in around the region of the 50-day moving average uh, which comes into play here uh, in around 21,785 down to around 21,700 notice how it has traded through the 50-day moving average on a number of occasions so we haven't seen a kind of a, a typical bounce directly off of it but it has put it has pierced that level that metric <coughs> excuse me and then afterwards uh, continued to kind of push higher beyond that so we are seeing lower lows uh sorry higher lows rather on the dow jones but you we, we, we get really to see higher highs until this this level is potentially taken out and then of course if you do take off this region here at 20,039 we can then be more confident we're going on to test the, the record high and potentially create further record highs Just open up the S&P 500 now. Similar looking position to the S&P 500. Gap tire over the weekend, uh, which, which is obviously which is um, a bullish in, a bullish in indicator. We're now up here, not too far away from the uh, the the resistance at uh, 24, 2480. We're, we're about six points or five or six points shy of that mark. Should we take out that level? Bulls will then be looking on towards the all-time high, which is created in August uh, in, in this in this area here, uh, just north uh, at 2,490. Uh, 2490. The precise level 2,491. So if, obviously, if you take out this level here, it could put us on track to retest the, the, the all-time high, and then beyond the all-time high, we will look to potentially create new highs. It is encouraging to see that the momentum has it, it remains in positive territory and it's actually increasing uh has actually increased uh, on the day on, on Monday in comparison with Friday. So you can be more confident that this upward that, that upward move is likely to continue. Any kind of pullbacks we see in the SP five hundred may find support in around this region here, uh the fifty day moving average, which is kind of acted as support or not even we haven't even traded as low as the 50-day moving average on a number of occasions. So any kind of moves in the direction of the 50-day moving average could entice potentially new buyers into the fold. And that will come into play in around the 2,457 region. And then if you take out that price, the next level to watch out for to the downside could be 2,446. And then we may be, we may be looking back towards the 100-day moving average at this price here at 2,435. So we talked about how we've seen a positive move in equities, um, both in Europe and also in the U.S. index futures. But now on the flip side of that, because it's, as I mentioned at the top of the webinar, that it has been a bit, of, it is being a bit of a risk on day. Conversely, we're seeing an exit, uh, money being poured out of, of gold. Then again, gold has, has had quite a good run along with silver, so uh, a bit of profit taking is, is hardly to be expected. So the back end of last week, uh, uh, running into Friday, when all the fear was was, pen, was pent up in relation to what are North Korea going to do, what's going to happen with Hurricane Irma, you saw gold uh, push on to just north of 13,500, 13, sorry, 1,300 rather, and 57, which of course it actually brings us back to resistance points here, back seen in August last year, so over a, a, a year high for the actual metal itself. So we traded just shy of, uh, ran into resistance, uh, just just shy of the resistance at 1,358. We've seen a bit of a pullback this morning. The upward trend is still very much in place. Uh, but what we have noticed is, in relation to the downward move in price, we've also seen a cooling in positive momentum. So as, as positive momentum is declining, and as price is declining, it could potentially mean that we're going to see a, a, a continuation of a bit of a pullback before we potentially can have another leg higher. So any pullbacks we see in gold may find buyers in this price here at uh, 1331 and then south of that at 1326. And then of course looking below that again, we we'll back looking towards 1305. We we'll be back looking towards the kind of 1310 and 1305 and 1300 region. 
uh, should we take out uh, 13.58 to the upside, we'd be looking to the 2016 high of 13.75. And this is the high that was created way back in the summer of, in, the, in early July uh, of, of, uh, of last year. And so the level to watch out for to the upside, should we break north of 13.58, uh, the next level to watch out for will be 13.75. And then beyond that, uh, the big psychological important 1400 number will then be uh, uh, potentially on the radar. Uh, turning our attention to silver, similar deal. Silver has had a great run on the back of the uncertainty uh, on what's going on in relation to Hurricane Irma and North Korea and, and the relatively weak US dollar. But now, of course, we have seen some money pour out of silver over the weekend. So as, as we saw on Friday, it spiked on Friday. I was trading at the highest level not seen since April on Friday, but of course we have given up some ground. Similar, similarly with silver, we have seen a bit of a, a decline in positive momentum. So as price is pushing lower, positive momentum, the buyers are kind of running out of steam. We may, we may potentially see a bit of a further pullback uh, in, in the price of silver, but it's the, the market is still very much in the upward trend it's been in uh, for, uh, for, for a number of months now. So moves lower in the silver market could find support in this region here at 17 spot 45 and then south of that at 17 spot 24 and then the the 200 day moving average um, could also be a level to potentially watch out for at 17.09 and if, if we continue to move higher in the price of silver we will need to come over the 18 18.00 barrier first of all and then beyond that traders will be looking towards 18.21 and then north of that, we'll be looking towards the April high of 18 spot 65. Uh, in relation to the price, <coughs> excuse me, of uh, of, uh, of oil, um, we obviously have seen some divergence between Brent crude oil and also the price of uh, of WTI uh, in, re in 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 the last couple of weeks. But as you can see here in the price of oil, even though once again it did spike going into, going into the weekend, we took out the we took out the May high, but it really couldn't hang on to that level. Creating creating of new multi-month highs is a sign that that the market is is to the bull aside. But we have seen a bit of a pullback today, and also keep in mind how we have seen a slight decline in positive momentum. So we could see potentially a bit of a drift lower before we, we potentially move higher again. So any moves lower. In the price of Brent, could find support in this area here, in around the fifty-three dollars per barrel, and then south of that, we have seen the dirty moving average has acted as support at the beginning of the month. So that's an also another area to watch out for potentially. Uh, the fifty-day moving average on Brent crude oil is currently at fifty-two dollars and thirty-four cents. Move to the upside, we were looking back up towards the fifty-five dollars a barrel mark, and then north of that, we were looking towards the April high of fifty-six dollars and fifty-three cents. <coughs> Excuse me. Turning our attention now to WTI, it's been a bit range-bound recently. Uh, hasn't been as as interesting as as uh, its Brent oil counterpart. So as we can see here, it's been very much kind of <clears throat> it didn't have it didn't have to get a positive upward swing and take out previous months highs like Brent. It's still very much it's still kind of range bound with like it has been for a number of weeks. So you can see here that, that WTI is almost trapped between the two day moving average to the upside at just at a, in around which comes into play at forty nine dollars and thirty six cents. And to the downside, it's been supported by well. Both the 50-day moving average and also the 100-day moving average are, in, broadly speaking, in around the same region, in around the $47.20 region. So, so some traders will be looking for a break outside of that move in either direction um, in order to, to, to try and ascertain which way the market is, is potentially moving. Conversely, traders are looking to actually kind of trade the range. Uh, we, we've, seen, we've seen evidence that the market has found it difficult to break north of the 200-day moving average while at the same time simultaneously being supported by the water day moving average. So range traders are looking, advantage, looking, at, looking to take advantage of a market saying within a certain price range will also be keeping an eye out on those on those levels as well. Should we break north of the 200-day moving average, 
uh, will then be look, some traders will be looking towards the, the, uh, the July high of $50.27 and then north of that the May high of $51.61 and then beyond that the August high of $53.56. Move to the downside, could potentially find support in around this price area here of $45.24 up to around $45.52. This price area here, kind of this kind of 30 cent region, uh, could be an area to watch out for. And then below that, uh, the, the, the July low of $43.56 could potentially be an area of support should we move south in the price of WTI. We have seen a bit of a sell off uh, and, and only recently in the euro versus the US dollar. Uh, but the trend for the single currency versus the greenback has been very much to the upside. Uh, it's been a very clear and concise upward trend. Uh, so a kind of popular strategy by some traders for the last number of months has been to kind of buy buy the dips uh, for the euro versus the sing versus the US dollar. So the pullback that we see now, uh, we're, we're trading just sub the psychologically important 120 level. So should we continue to see moves and lower in the euro versus the, versus the dollar, we could potentially see some support in around the 119.16 region and then south of that at 118.47 and then potentially below that again we might be looking towards the 100 day moving out sorry the 50 day moving average at 117.32 and then obviously to the upside we're going to be looking at Friday's high as the uh, as a kind of first port of call uh, the first kind of layer of resistance the, the, the market would need to break north of uh, which comes into play at 190, 120 and 92. And then, of course, beyond that, you'll be looking towards 121, 122, so on and so forth. Oh, in relation to the question uh, regarding, w, regarding WTI, um, it's been, the, kind of, it's been the, kind of the classic case of that in relation to actually refineries, um, I think it's actually it's it's actually been again, again, a kind of classic case of whereby the disruption that has been caused has been kind of caused on the on the refinery side, and actually even though we've just refineries have just been kind of getting on track, getting back on track in relation to what's going on uh, on the back of her, of, of uh, tropical storm Harvey, we've obviously had to dis have obviously had to contend with the with the um, with the um, with the with the hurricane, uh, with the hur with the hur with hurricane Irma. So what we're seeing here is a potentially kind of shift. The kind of divergence is, is still in play between WTI, where WTI is 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 uh, has been kind of pushing higher, and and, and conversely, we've actually seen a, push, a slight de de decline in the price of uh, of Brent crude oil over the uh, over the weekend. So it's a kind of classic move whereby getting actually disruption in, in the region is knocking out wti bearing in mind wti because they couldn't get wti into the u.s refineries that was actually causing a downward move in the price of price of wti when when hurricane when, when hurricane irma uh, sorry apologize when tropical storm harvey was was was, uh, was on the radar and then we, we saw a, a kind of a, a reverse in that as oil refineries are coming back into play. Now we're seeing because of just overall kind of disruption in the region, it's almost like WTI is playing catch up with Brent and and and, and uh, because obviously there was there was quite a there was a bit of a lag between the two. We did see a period there where where Brent where WTI was in decline, and that, and we were seeing we were seeing Brent uh, on the rise. Now we're just seeing a kind of a divergence back, and we could see some kind of harmonisation of the two prices. What we're seeing here on the pound versus the US dollar, the pound is, is still holding up nice and strong versus the US dollar. Uh, the levels to watch out for to the upside. Not, notice how this is, this is a good example of why I kind of like to use to get the momentum indicator down here at the bottom of the screen. After the, on the back of the last month's Bank of England meeting, uh, what we did see is we saw a fairly decent decline in, in, the, in the pound versus the US dollar. And as the price was declining all the way down throughout August, we're seeing a fairly steady and consistent increase in, ne in negative momentum. And then towards the kind of back end of the month, we saw the rate at which negative momentum 
actually starting to decline and then that, that was mirrored by a slight kind of bounce back in the price and then after that we saw the price actually as if the price was pushing higher we actually saw a classic kind of increase in negative momentum an increase in positive momentum all the while the price is pushing higher so when the price is going up and the momentum when the price and the momentum are going the same direction you can be more confident uh, that, that that the price the price action is here to say because it's showing itself the buyers are, to, are, are in charge and we can see a clear see sign of buying momentum is on is on the rise so the next level to watch out for to the upside on cable at uh, the pound versus the dollar is 132.67 uh, the high from august and then of course beyond that we'll be looking towards 133.134 moves lower to the, to the downside may find support in at 131.64 and then south of that at 131 itself and then we could potentially swing back to the to this this price here uh, the 130 region the euro versus the green versus the british pound has been as been by and large the big picture has been positive but we have seen a fairly steady decline in, in, in recent sessions and as the price has been clearly been, been pushing lower here we can see that there's been a very clear and, and, and concise increase in negative momentum so we don't we're not seeing of any sign if anything we're seeing that the rate of the, the rate of the negative move is increasing so if anything the, the, the selling momentum is on the rise so we could be looking to you know, push back towards the 50 day moving average uh, which comes into play at at a nine zero um ninety twenty six zero point nine two six 0.926 and then south of that we could be looking towards the, the, the 90, 90 pence level itself bearing in mind we haven't really tri well you, you dipped below the 50 day moving average back in may but it's been a long time since, since we've been down at that metric and seeing as the big picture is to the upside for this trend we could potentially see some buying come into play at this price here of 0 0.9026 or even the kind of this region itself of 0 0.9000 should we see continue, should we see a push is higher uh, in the price of euro versus the british pound uh levels to watch out for to the upside we'll be back up towards 92 and then beyond that 92.26 and then of course we may be looking towards uh the august high which comes into play at just just north of 93 itself Dollar. This is, we're not going to cover the American dollar versus the Japanese yen. If you have any markets uh, that you do want me to, you don't, you do want me to give to to cover, uh, please just let me know. Stick it in the chat box. I'll be happy to do so because um, I, I am aware that we did start this webinar a bit late due to technical issues. Uh, but I will kind of run down a kind of glance of what's going on uh, in terms of the week ahead as well. Uh, pushing lower on the it's very much a clear downward trend on the US dollar versus the Japanese yen as you can give us indication of how actually how um, how things how negative things were on Friday we saw a major kind of push lower in the dollar versus the yen on on, on Friday going on here to, to create to create take, going on here to create a level not seen since November last year so the, the momentum and the, and the uh, the outlook is very much to the downside we can still see here that momentum uh, is in, is very much it is ever so slightly in negative territory uh, so just keep an eye on that as well so should we move lower uh, continue to should we move lower in the dollar versus the yen uh, we, we could be looking to back towards uh, testing the the Friday support at 107.32 and then below that look towards 107 and then below that we're looking towards one the 106 number uh, as we are seeing a bounce higher today, we could see a bit of an extension potentially uh, in, the, in the positive move. The next level to watch out for to the upside is going to be 109.32, and then north of that 109.82, and then this level here at 110.67. As you can see, it's been in a fairly obvious downward trend. So while we, we remain south of the kind of 110.67 region. Uh, we, we, it is, we could potentially see the overall negative move to remain intact.
the Australian dollar um, has seen a bit of a pullback, uh, just ever so slightly after after uh, having a, quite a good day uh, on, on Friday. But um, as you can see here, the trend is very much to the upside on the Aussie versus the US dollar. Positive momentum is on the rise as well, so that, that's also something you can be a bit more confident in this this upward move. Um, looking looking, we have seen a bit obviously a bit of a I've seen a, a, a a bit of a downward day today on, on the Aussie versus the greenback, uh, as money is because as you've seen a broad and strengthening of the US dollar. Uh, any but, but while we do remain north of the 80 level on the dollar on the Aussie dollar versus the versus the US dollar, that that, that will still kind of be a quite a a a, kind of a bullish uh, a bullish indicator. So we could see some kind of selling back towards 80, but then again, 80 is a kind of big psychological number. For the Aussie versus the US dollar, so we could see some potentially new buying uh, come, into, come into play should we go down to that level. If you do break south of it, the next level to watch out for to the downside will be the support at a, is will be 72, 74, 79 rather, 79, 42, and then south of that again back towards the 50-day moving average at 78, 78. Moves to the upside, looking back towards 81, and then, and then obviously the Friday's high, which comes into play at 80.47, and then north of that, 81.63 and 82. I do thank you for uh, for your patience for for hanging with, hanging through through at the um at the very beginning of the webinar because we did obviously have some technical issues. As always, I just want to, want to take take the time to kind of point out. Uh, to kind of the, uh, the the on our website news and analysis. This is where the the analysis that we that we that we do gets posted from around the globe. You can see here a breakdown of the what to watch out for. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we, this is the, uh, the weekly calendar. What we can look out for tomorrow, we have we have a new uh, iPhone coming out from Apple. But also keep in mind, uh, we may hear some updates in relation to Apple TV. Uh, what we have is we have UK CPI data coming out tomorrow. Or expecting annual CPI in the UK to tick up to 2.8% from 2.6%. There's also a Bank of England meeting on Thursday, so that's so the voting pattern will be the voting breakdown will be interesting and one to watch. Wednesday we have an update from Dun from Dunelm on Wednesday. Uh, on Thursday we have some numbers out of China. We have industrial production numbers and also retail sales numbers out of China. On Friday, Thursday and Friday. We have a combination of U.S. retail sales and also U.S. inflation. And given that we've, we've seen a broad sell-off in the U.S. dollar, people are, are very um, are very unsure of whether whether the, the Federal Reserve are going to be raising rates in December or not. We've had a resignation for a member of the of the of the Federal Reserve. Issues in uh, curtailing to the to the debt ceiling, tying in tropical storm Starvey, tying in also in Hurricane Irma. Not to mention that the tensions with North Korea as well. So uh, the US dollar has been very much in, uh, moving to the downside, even though we have seen a bounce back today. Companies to watch out for tomorrow we have Q1 numbers from Ashtead. We also have first, full, full, first half numbers from JD Sports. Uh, on As I mentioned, on Wednesday we have an update from Dunelm. Uh, we also have numbers from Soko International and the home builder Gallifrey Tri. Thursday, we have first half numbers from Morrison Supermarket, and we also have first half numbers from Next. And Friday, the one to watch out for from the UK will be, will of course, be JD Weatherspoons. As always, I'll show you very quickly on our uh, platform where other kind of uh, useful tools uh, can be found. Some of some of the updates that we do get put on our get get put on our um, on the news and analysis section. Others get updated here on Insight, and Insight can be found under Market Pulse, third option down. Oh, <laughs> third option, sorry, I apologize. The second option down is Insight. The one I want, what I want to come on to is the chart forum now, uh, which is a quick kind of snapshot of a chart and a couple hundred words, uh, a couple of hundred characters written about what we see, uh, what we think could potentially happen looking at the chart. The chart forum is a third option down. The economic calendar. Uh, is is uh, is the is the last option on the list gives you a breakdown of the major economic events that that are that are coming out during the week, and also uh, it will have the previous updates and also it will have the uh, um have the forecast for what is what is what is penciled in for that particular economic event. 
lastly um, we also have other other uh, webinars you can you can sign up to and they're in the same place where you found this webinar so later tonight we have a webinar at 7 p.m london time 7 uh, 1900 british summer time the trader development program uh, on wednesday at 1930 bst british summer time london time uh, we have the index trading uh, we have an index trading webinar and then this day next week as usual uh, we will have the not 12:15 wiki market webinar with myself Dave Madden I do want to thank you for bearing with us uh, because of the technical issues at the top of the show but uh, thank you all thank thank you thanks to everyone here at CMC markets have a good week and good luck